So hi everyone and uh, welcome to this particular video on weak stationarity versus strong stationarity or strict stationarity. So in time series, because it's the most abundant form of data out there, it would be nice to analyze econometrically. But uh, as we mentioned, analyzing sort of time series data may be a pain in the butt in many ways, just because we can see that if you try to plot data sets, you can see abrupt changes, episodes of volatility, and in general, time series uh, data, uh, data sets, if you look at the data, they have trends going up, going down, you know, cycles, and things like that. And those things are hard to deal with, for the most part, econometrically. And as we mentioned, there are many ways to alleviate those, such as transforming the variable, differencing, and so on, which we'll get to. But uh, in order to understand why we do those things, we need to sort of start with uh, distinguishing the difference between weak stationarity and strong stationarity. While strong stationarity is the ideal thing, okay, we, uh, if you have an econometric model and you have a variable that's strictly stationary, it's quite easier to analyze this particular variable. But in general, the requirement for running most of the models is just weak stationarity. So let's elucidate the difference between the two. So as I mentioned in the past, stationarity is a desirable property that the series has from a modeling perspective. We want our variables in general to be stationary. And the, the aspect of stationarity has significant implications on how a series behaves or could be modeled. Right. Uh, as, as I mentioned, ideally, you would want data to be stationary. That is uh, what we will discuss. But unfortunately, most are non-stationary, especially in economic, especially economic variables. Most of them are non-stationary. And things generally, it's, it's simply because that things have an increasing or decreasing trend or they follow a certain cycle. And those are true for most economic uh, variables. However, there are also some variables that are generally stationary from the get-go. So let's start with strong stationarity. Now, we define strong stationarity as for any observation in time, say T1 until TT, an element of Z. For any specific time, say TK, an element of Z. The joint distribution function f of the set of random variables from one period will be equal to that of any other period. Now, this is a quite a mouthful, right? It's kind of hard to understand, but I think the easiest way to understand it is just by saying that it just means that the distribution of values remains the same as time progresses. So in the past video, we discussed something called the stochastic process. And we said that the stochastic process is generally like a PDF, right? It's a collection of PDFs. Now, to illustrate, there I have here two sort of rows, a, a row above and a row below, okay? If you look at the row above, okay, the PDF across these four time periods is generally is the same, okay? If you recall the exact wording, it's that the specific values that that function could take is constant throughout time. It's just a fancier way of saying the PDF across time does not change, right? So the PDF in period one is the same as the PDF in period four or YT plus three. But if you look at the case at the bottom, okay, the row at the bottom, Okay, the PDF changes. So in period one, it looks like a normal distribution. In period two, it's more flat, more skewed to a certain point. In period three, it's quite a broad. In period four, it's more like period one, right? So if you look at the row on top, the PDF remains consistent. It's the same range, same kurtosis, same skewness, etc. Never changes. Meaning the range of values that that probability distribution function could take doesn't change, right? It's as if, uh, if you think about uh, rolling a die, okay, uh, in an, uh, say 10 times, okay? For each roll, okay, it approximately has the same PDF, right? For each roll, like each roll likelihood that you're gonna get a certain value one through six, okay? It depends on that PDF. And that PDF doesn't change unless you change the die itself. Right. So it doesn't change. It's always going to be the same. The chance of you getting six on draw three and draw four, exactly the same, assuming independent draws. Okay. 
But if you look at the row at the bottom, the PDF changes, which means that the range changes, other things change, cortosis changes, etc. Meaning the potential value of a particular economic variable is no longer constant throughout time. It varies throughout time. Okay. So let's illustrate this strong stationarity requirement. Strong stationarity looks something like number one, where in the range of the PDF, okay, is generally the same. So look at the range of the PDF here. It's the same, right? It's roughly the same PDF across time. But if you look at two, in here it's flat, in here it's very sharp. So the PDF changes. In period three, you have a, a different mean for each of them. And period four, it's like a combination, okay? So in general, okay, those things sort of change. Only one is strictly stationary or strong stationary. Okay. Now, as I mentioned, okay, strong stationarity is kind of hard to, to meet, especially in the realm of economics. There, there's not really much to say about most variables because most of them are not really strictly stationary or strongly stationary. But as I mentioned, that's a strong stationarity is great, but most models just require weak stationarity. And it's a more reasonable requirement that you can achieve by variable transformations and some other techniques. So how do we define weak stationarity? Well, a series is considered to be weakly stationary if that series has a constant mean, a constant variance, and a constant auto covariance, right? So when we say a constant mean, the mean does not change, okay? When we say this constant variance, the variance does not change. Okay, it's constant throughout time. And when we say constant autocovariance, the, the, it's basically a fancy way of saying the variance between one period and another period, okay, if you take that expectation, is constant throughout time, which uh, comparing any two periods will be the same. So between period one and two is the same as period one and three. We'll dig more into that in the next video. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say weak stationary. Okay, so... That's it for this particular video. In the next video, we're going to deal with this concept of the autocovariance. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.